Hello everyone, and welcome back to part two of the Avid Blogs tutorial series, Get Started Fast with Media Composer for Adobe Editors. My name is Kevin P. McAuliffe, and in this lesson, we're gonna talk about probably one of the most misunderstood processes when working in Media Composer, and that is acquiring media. We're gonna talk about importing, linking to, consolidating, and transcoding media as well as the proxy timeline and when you're going to use each one of these in your workflow. When we're done, you're gonna have an understanding of how you're going to need to get your footage into Media Composer properly so that you can start working. Now, one of the big differences between Adobe Premiere and Media Composer is that inside of Premiere, most editors are just linking to their footage and they're editing with that footage from wherever it's coming from on their hard drive and that's one of the great selling features of Premiere. Inside of Media Composer, we like to do things a little bit different, where once the media is linked to inside of Media Composer, we like to either consolidate or transcode it so that it's converted or rewrapped into MXF Media, because one thing that Media Composer excels at more than any other nonlinear editing application is being able to handle large projects, meaning 15, 20, half an hour, an hour, two hours, or more, you're never gonna have a problem if you've consolidated or transcoded all that media, your system's gonna keep running as smoothly as possible. Okay, let's now get into Media Composer and let's start talking about how we're gonna get footage in that's similar to Premiere and then what we're gonna do once we have it in there. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an alt and tab for my Windows friends out there. And the first thing I want to do is I want to put aside a common misconception that many editors, Media Composer and otherwise have, about working with different frame sizes, different raster dimensions, different frame rates, and different codecs inside of Media Composer. Many editors think that that is not possible to do. But as you can see, with the bin that I have open, I've also opened up the Format tab inside of our project. You'll see that we're working in a 1080i project but I've got clips from all different raster dimensions, frames per second, and video codecs inside of this bin that we can work with inside of our timeline. Again, much like I said in the previous lesson, when you're getting in and setting up your project, what you're really setting up is your final export and how you're gonna be working in your timeline, not necessarily the type of clips that you're going to be able to import, consolidate, and transcode to. Now let's talk about importing. In most cases in my workflows, importing is used to bring in clips from After Effects, you know, graphics, passes, and things like that, and I need to get them into my system. What I'm gonna do is right click, I'm gonna come to Input, and I'm gonna come to Import Media. From the Import Media window, we can select any type of clip that we'd like to bring in. We have a few options as well. I can come into the Options window. You'll see that I can get in and make some image size adjustments, some field ordering adjustments. I can adjust the color levels, and even get in and tell Media Composer whether I'm using an alpha channel or not. Now that's also something that's important to keep in mind about the Avid DNX HD codec is that it is a codec that supports alpha channels, so you don't need to render everything out as an animation codec just to get that alpha channel into Media Composer. All right, now I'd like to move on and I'd like to talk about getting footage in that's not something that you may have rendered out of After Effects, in most cases, it would be file-based media that you've probably got from camera cards or other locations like that. And what we wanna do is get this footage in, and once we have it in, then we're gonna to wanna to either consolidate or transcode to it. All right, now before we move on, there's something exceptionally important that I do want to point out. We're gonna spend a lot of time in this lesson talking about consolidating, transcoding, actually creating media inside of Media Composer. But one thing that you're gonna love about the flexibility of Media Composer is coming from Premiere. We're accustomed to just linking to media and start editing with it right away. You have that exact same flexibility inside of Media Composer, which is great. There's really no difference in your workflow. Simply link to, have the clip in your bins, start editing with it. But one excellent feature of Media Composer is the fact that you can create actual pieces of media out of those linked to clips. Because one thing that Media Composer does excel at and has really always excelled at is getting in and handling large amounts of media inside of bigger projects. So again, link to media, start working with it. Wanna get in and transcode that into media as well? You can do that as well. Media Composer works the way that you want it to work. All right, let's keep on moving. To get that footage in, we're gonna right click, I'm gonna come to input, 
and I'm going to come to the source browser. Now I'm just going to come, let's just pick a different folder here. I'm just going to choose, sure, let's choose this time lapse folder. Now, what I wanted to show you was the fact that Media Composer is going through, you'll see it said not processed, and now it's gone in and determined that the plugin that was used for all these clips is QuickTime, and it even tells me that the codec that was used was DVC Pro HD 720p. The reason that I want to point this out is that if you have a bunch of clips that say not processed, and you attempt to link to the Media Composer won't do that. In many cases, you just have to give it a second or two just to get in and scan all those clips. And once it's figured out the plugin that's been used and the codec, then you'll be ready to bring these clips in. Now keep in mind, depending on the type of footage that you're using, the plugin and the codec will obviously vary based on the type of media you're using. But what I'm gonna do is just link to this clip right here. I'm gonna link to it and then we're gonna close the source browser. Now you'll see that this clip is a DVC Pro HD 720p 60 clip, and I do know that DVC Pro HD is a supported codec in Media Composer. What I'm going to do is to select the clip, I'm gonna right click on it, and I'm gonna come down to Consolidate Transcode. We're gonna make sure Consolidate is selected. I'm gonna make sure that both the Consolidate Only Linked Media and the Delete Original Media Files When Done checkboxes are selected. Now, don't worry. A lot of editors start to get stressed when they see this delete original media and they think that the clip that's on my hard drive is going to get deleted when I select that. It's actually not. What this is telling Media Composer to do is to take the link to clip, delete that, and replace it with the final consolidated clip. I'm simply now going to say consolidate and you'll see that in a matter of seconds that clip was changed from a link to clip to an actual master clip and I'm now ready to work with this in my project. Now something else that's very important that I point out, you'll notice that when it did the consolidation, it took this clip, we're still in a 1080i project, this clip is still 1280 by 720 or 960 by 720 because it is a DVC Pro HD codec. When you consolidate a clip from a supported codec, all Media Composer is doing is rewrapping that clip, whether it's 720p, whether it's SD, whether it's HD, it's going to maintain the frame rate, the codec, and the raster dimension, or the aspect ratio of that clip. Once you get in and you start transcoding clips, you can maintain the frame rate, but any raster dimension is going to immediately be crushed down to the raster dimension of the project that you are working in. That is something that's very important to keep in mind. Now, with that being said, we can get around that and we can actually transcode our red media and keep it this 4K frame size. Now what's also important to keep in mind is that especially with red footage, we have all kinds of different dimensions or different raster dimensions. In this case, we're working with 4096 by 2304. So what I'm going to want to do is to transcode one of these clips as a 4K clip. So how would I go about doing this? Well, you'll remember I just said, that if I transcode it the way things are right now, it's gonna get crushed down to 1080i, and I don't wanna do that, because maybe I wanna use this clip as 4K in another project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head up to our Format tab, I'm gonna to head to the Presets, and I'm gonna choose a 4K resolution that's pretty darn close. Let's go with 4096 by 2160. Now you'll notice that that is a progressive project, that's fine, I'm simply gonna select that. You'll notice that Media Composer has adjusted the aspect ratio of the composer and the preview window. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna to come to this clip because maybe we're gonna to need to make some modifications to it. Now, why don't I call it up so that you can take a look at it. Here we go, I've just double clicked on that here. Let's actually make sure we're double clicking on the right red clip. There we go, perfect, okay. Now I do wanna give a big shout out to Artbeats and thank them for getting this beautiful 4K footage for us to work with in this tutorial. Now. What's also important for me to mention is that anytime you link to a clip, there's a lot of things going on under the hood that you don't necessarily see, but you need to be aware of. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this clip and I'm gonna navigate to its source settings. You'll see that we have the option, especially with red footage, to get in and do things like get in and adjust all of these parameters. Because this is a red clip, we can get in and make these adjustments before we get in and transcode anything. Now I'm just gonna do some stuff in here. It doesn't really matter what I do. I'm just gonna make it a little bit brighter. That's okay. Again, this is just for the purposes of me showing this to you. We can get in, adjust some red settings. 
we can get in and adjust color space. We even have the ability to get in and come in and adjust the actual framing of what's going on in our scene. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, why would I even have to worry about this? Well, let me show you exactly why you have to worry about this. I'm just going to take my frame flex window right over here beside our project setting. You'll see that with our current 4K setup, it has an aspect ratio of 1.90 to 1. Well, you'll see that the image aspect ratio of what we're working with right now is 16 by 9, and they don't match. So what's going to happen is, is that your image is either going to be stretched or squashed down to fill our frame size. So what are we going to do to get around this? Well, what we're going to do is with our frame flex bounding box, we're going to come in and set the frame flex aspect ratio to match the aspect ratio of our project. You'll notice that as soon as I did that, what's now happened is, is that our image is now sitting perfectly inside the frame and is being slightly cropped off at the top or bottom. You can see it right here. And the great part is, is that you can now get in and just adjust that frame flex window just like that. We can now come down and say OK. And our shot's going to be updated. You'll see there we go. And it's now been reframed to fit properly inside of our 4K project size. Now all I'm going to do is simply right click. I'm going to come down to Consolidate Transcode. Instead of Consolidate, we will select Transcode. The raster dimensions are going to stay the same. The project dimensions, we're going to keep the source's frame rate. Well, now we can get in and choose one of our DNX HR, the new resolution that was given to us once we moved into larger than HD projects. I'm just going to choose a standard quality DNX HR. I'll leave everything else the same and I'll simply say transcode. Now, I also have the ability and the great flexibility to run consolidation and transcode processes in the background. So that is very cool. Now, I could run this if I wanted to, but for the purposes of time, I'm actually just going to cancel out of this window. Because keep in mind, I can still come in, I can hit play and play this clip, and you'll see that it is dropping frames, which is a very common issue you can run into if you're attempting to play back, you know, large files like this 4K red clip linked to in your timeline. Or even, let's say you're working on an older system with clips you've transcoded, and you still might be getting a bit of an issue in working in larger than HD projects. So is there a workaround? Yes, there is. This is where the proxy timeline comes into play. The proxy timeline is going to let you set your timeline to be different resolutions so that you can get the playback performance that you need to keep working. So let me come back to the beginning again and just hit play. We'll see. It plays a little bit in real time. Then you can see it starts to stutter a bit. What I'm going to do is, again, head right back to the beginning. I'm going to head over to the Format tab, and you'll see here's the proxy option right here. I'm going to drop that down, and I can choose quarter quality, or I can choose 16th quality. I'm just going to bump this down. You'll see it's going to bump it down to 2K at quarter quality. Let's see if we get better playback here. That's looking pretty good right there. It looks like we're getting real-time playback, and the quality is still very good. Now, if I was to bump it down even further, you'll see there's 1 16th quality. Again, the quality is still good enough for you to do an offline with. Get all your edits done before you're ready to export it and still get great performance and being able to get your edits done on time to keep your clients happy. All right, that wraps up our lesson talking about the differences in acquiring media between Premiere and Avid Media Composer. And coming up in our next lesson, I want to talk managing media. I want to talk about what happens with this media after it's consolidated, transcoded, or imported. I want to talk about your Avid Media Files folder that's going to be on your external hard drive. I want to talk about media creation settings, and then I want to wrap it up by talking about the media tool and how you're going to be able to use it for media management and being able to get in and deleting media that you don't need anymore inside of your project. And don't forget that you can get post-production workflow tutorials and industry insight that you need to bring great stories to life by checking us out at avid.com slash mediacomposer.